I'm working as fast as I can. <laughs> I'm working as fast as I can. I'm just as eager as you to see what's going to happen. This plate, it solves everything. It's so simple. Um, and so, uh, like I said, I, I did a little bit of, of a mock-up just so I knew where to drill. And I, I don't want to show you like all this tinker, tinker, tinker crap, but like uh, they tell me I'm supposed to make videos all the time so people can see the, the process. And so this is the process. I have to uh, clean an epoxy, uh, both casings, and uh, I'm going to show you how I do uh, with that in a moment. And It's tight. Time for some epoxy. It, it's it's it fits. It fits like a glove. Uh, I wish it could weld, but cast iron is will crack. It could braze, but I think it's that's that's a good it's a good strong part now. I mean it's a good strong part. I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol, toothbrush. Gonna spread it around here. Get this as clean as we can. Maybe uh, a little gun brush here. Yep. Something wrong with that. Is it? What did I do? Blacken the whole damn thing up. What a waste of friggin' time. I can't see a thing. Completely blinded myself. Dang it. Now I gotta start over. What a mess! Oh yeah, that's when you work in a nice neat spot you can always find a way. I can do it. Something funny with this tip. I don't know. I'm gonna get yelled at. We're gonna shout down the stairs. Quit that mouse on fire! What's talking about? I don't smell nothing. All right, we washed it in this sink. I think we're back to we're about back to square one, which is better than where we were before we got uh, garbage all over it. So that was that was obnoxious. I'm kind of mad about that, but whatever. Two part paste of putty epoxy.
Now that we have all the adhesion taken care of, we want to make sure we have it actually, you know, worked into the grain of all the metal. It's going to get the best adhesion we can all around. Oh, it's, it's a hot piece of metal right now, warm at least. I don't know how that affects putty, hopefully not in a bad way. I don't know. If it fails, then you'll know what not to do. Isn't that the great way? That's a great thing about watching other people work. So you can learn what to do or what not to do. Do it yourself. You got to make all the, you get all the success, but you get all the failures too. So hopefully I don't have to teach me too much. I've made a lot of mistakes already. So now if we want it to look nice later, we can take a, you know, something to it and machine it down a little bit. Like not machine it, but you know, just file it down, make it look pretty, but I want a bunch of bulk to it. I want it to be beefy because this is going to have vibration and expansion and there's a lot of issues with bonding two things with any kind of adhesive. I want to give it the best chance. It's in the housing pretty tight. There's another piece. Here's a piece of cardboard. We're just going to dab, dab it on in a dabby, on -y sort of way. At a time of 15 to 20 minutes, hard in one hour. See if it works. I don't know. If it busts off, I'll just grind it all down and try again with something else. If if this were not cast iron, I would gusset weld, um, you know, brackets. The problem is, is um, you know, this is steel and this is cast, and uh, you can braze, but even that will crack. And I just don't want to risk this housing to cracking. It's just not worth it to me. You know, I, I think the epoxy is going to be strong enough. You're going to get some vibration because there's going to be, well, it's going to be vibrating on the motor and then there's going to be a hose that goes down to the motor. And then there, the other end is going to have, the other housing is going to go straight to a carburetor. That's going to be vibrating. So you want it to be strong. I think it's going to be good enough. We're just going to, I mean, Test rig, test rig. If it if it gets through the test, it's good. If it fails, uh, we've got all summer to kind of test and tune and things. And if it fails during that time, uh, we'll we'll start on a version two. I might be able to get a version two uh, before No Name Nationals at the rate this is going. One of the conceptual pieces that was really important that I haven't really shown you yet is this um this plate. So since we're we're ditching the the oil high oil pressure bypass and the casting that goes with it in favor of this plate. This plate doesn't weigh a quarter of what one of those housings were, and there was two. So we've gone from a, a very heavy to a very light but just as durable thing. One of the problems with putting two back to back is that this bump out here in the housing uh, is going to leak. There's no there's no mating housing. So we're going to use this plate. This plate mates to the housing. The bolts align. This here is for the second rotor. Um, the shaft is going to go through this plate to, to drive the second housing. Um, so, you know, the, the input Input shaft of the motor is going to drive this rotor and that rotor. And then this rotor is going to have a keyed shaft that goes through the plate and drives two rotors on this side in the other mating housing. Now these two, these two holes are to allow pressure equalization because we're only going to have one in and one out for the two housings. So the in is going to supply both and the out is going to pressurize both so that we only have to have, you know, we don't have to, it's all internally connected. Uh, these holes could be, you know, cut wider 
and more accurate, but this is enough volume. Uh, these, these are bigger sizes than one pump needs, so they're going to serve both pumps and it'll be no problem. If it is a problem, uh, you know, we can fine tune that. If we eventually come up with a design that other people are going to want to use, we'll make that nice. But, you know, unless you've got a CNC uh, cutter or something like that to cut out this plate, that's close enough. Um, this hole here doesn't have to be perfectly accurate because the shaft uh, is smaller than this and uh, there's not going to be any real leak through. Uh, so, And it solves the problem with uh, mating. It, the, the entire uh, plate is there and then we've drilled out the holes on one of these and we're going to put bolts through to hold it all together. Um, and uh, this bitch is gonna pump. Now, how much? I don't, I don't know. But God, I can't wait to find out. I gotta wait for stuff to set. And then uh, once I have that set, the shaft that goes through this housing, I need to cut a key into it. And then I can clean up and start to assemble. Um, so then I can put it on a test. I have, for this test, I don't have to use the drill. So the drill limited me at, uh, the, the drill that I was using in my first, uh, preliminary tests only went up to 1200 RPM, but now I have a die grinder with a dial. So I can dial the speed. So I can potentially, uh, test between 1,000 RPMs and 10,000 RPMs. And that is going to be something to see. Stick around. Thanks for watching. So th this is hodgepodge and cobbled together. But it's a conceptual work. Um, if it does work and we can put it on the mini bike and make it run, and get results that we like. Um, I'm not afraid to sit, put it on the shelf and start on a version two. Um, most of the time, like a lot of the time, weeks of time was spent uh, conceptualizing how it would all go together and figuring out sources for parts. I can make a second one cheaper um, and better and stronger and more uh, like it'll work, it'll last longer. Um, and I can make it in a more rapid time because I've conceptually worked through so much of the problems.